Hello, lovely people. I'm sure you're enjoying our videos. As you've realized, our videos are in two parts. We've got the course based ones that discusses the various sections of the law, and we've also got the everyday law. The course based are designed for academic study and in depth understanding of the law. But if you are interested in knowing about the law as it will appear or it will be useful for an everyday man, please always try and keep a focus on the everyday law content. It is done in vernacular and in simple and easy ways said that the man on the street will be able to appreciate the law in his daily life. If you stand in need of any academic support for any of your law courses, please do not hesitate to reach the number below, either via call or by WhatsApp. Stay tuned for more of our videos on Supreme Law Publications. So in this video, we are going to discuss the defenses to action in land. And the first part that we are going to talk about is adverse possession, as you saw. We have mentioned that, you see, it is important that anybody who acquires land should have a proper title to land. So if a person has a proper title to land, in the mean, like what we are trying to mean is that the kind of interest that he has is grounded in law. And that constitutes a proper title. Now, that title that the person has, that interest that is founded in law and is solid, I mean, the law is, is behind the fellow, the person can assert that right or title against another person. So usually this may culminate in matters coming to the court. When a matter comes to court, where someone is seeking a court to make a declaration of title to him, that is, he's saying to the court that, look, on the basis of these facts, one, two, three, X, Y, Z, and all that, I want you, the court, to make a declaration to that effect. We say that that is an action in land. When you see that we said that defense for an action in land, that's what we mean. When someone brings a suit against another person on land matters, asking the court to say that me, the land belongs to me, that means that he's asking the court to declare title in his favor. That is what, that is what we mean by that. So what could be the defense? There are several of those defenses. The first we'll talk about here is the defense of adverse possession. What is adverse possession? Now, to help you appreciate the whole concept, let's, let me just give you this kind of scenario. Let's imagine that um, there are two individuals. Now, this person bought his land around the year 1985. Just as, I, I like, just like, as, just as an example. So he bought it in 1985. Then probably for some reason he traveled or he went to do some other kind of thing. Then after a while, after about 10 years, that's what usually happens, he came back and he saw that there was someone else on the land, probably farming on the land and the person has put some kind of structure there. He is, this other person is literally living on the land. Then he comes and tells him that, oh, Master, this land belongs to me, so I leave. These are my documents and my papers. And the person who is on the land and he's farming and doing all kind of cultivation refuses to go. All right. And his claim is that he thinks that he's been there. Me, I've been here for, for, for about 10 years. Nobody has ever come here to ask me anything about the land. Why are you now just coming to tell me that you have some documents and all that? No, me too. I paid money to somebody and etc. You understand what I mean? So now... He is trying to kind of ward off or fight this person who has got the papers, who has got, who purportedly has documents of the land with a claim that he's been there for a very long time. You understand that those are normal or sometimes occurrences that happen. It may even be you. You may have been, might have been on the land for a very long time, okay? Some people uh, stay on land for five years, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, and all that. Some even erect structures on them. Then along the line, he'll be there and somebody comes and sees that the land belongs to him. So he's evicting him or something of that sort. What could be is the person's defense to such an action. He takes you to court. You are there and they bring you a writ of summons. They come to court and answer that you are trespassed onto my land. What can be your defense? We say that one of the defenses is the defense of adverse possession. A similar story that I've, I'm seeing happened here in Ghana. There are lots of them. But in a more recent one, in 2020, the case was Binga Sapo Subati versus Kobo Subra. That was recorded in the 2020 Supreme Court of Ghana Law Reports. Now, in that case, 
this were a bit of the facts because we'll be relying on it in much of our discussion. So this Binga, Zubati, uh, Dubati Sapo, he claimed that he had some documents to some land. He had some title to some land. And when he went there to try and exert his authority over the land, he saw that there was a woman. This woman was the one they called Kobusumbra, who had been on the land. Now, Kobusumbra's case was that she has been on the land for more than 20 years. Because the person that um, Sapo or Dubate is claiming that he got the land from, I mean, he knows the person, but according to this woman, uh, Busampra says, I know, I've been here for more than 20 years. I've been the person who has been taking care of this place and etc. So this was the case. The case went to court and they traveled up to the Supreme Court. Now, before we come to the real conclusions of the Supreme Court, we will just want to preview an quotation that came from that, that, that particular case. And it was delivered. The Supreme Court was speaking um, through her, her, his lordship, Justice Emmanuel Yoni Kulendi. And this is what Justice Kulendi said in the case of Dubati versus Bosombra. By court. A long period of possession of land alone does not guarantee title, nor does it by itself stop another from challenging the title. To succeed in his plea of limitation, he must demonstrate that he is, by law, in adverse possession. You saw that. The point is this. If someone is in long possession, it does not necessarily give the person a proper title. The fact that someone has been residing on a piece of land for a very long time does not automatically mean that he has better title to the land than anybody else. All right? That is what we are trying to say, or that is what the court means. Unless... This long possession is grounded in the claim of adverse possession. You understand that? So the point is this, guys. If someone is on a piece of land and he does not have, let's say, um, documents on the land or something like that, but he's been residing or his, docu his documents are not actually perfected, all, all right, then he resides on the land for a very long time, long time. In the case of Bosompra, she had been on the land for more than 20 years. We are saying that the only time that such long possession could grant somebody a better title is when that possession is tied to what we call an adverse possession. So it now leads us to the question, long possession can only give someone a better title if it is granted in adverse possession. Therefore, what is that adverse possession? That becomes a logical, the, the logical question that ought to be asked. What is adverse possession? All right. So now let's see the definition of adverse possession. The definitions we are going to look at are those that are founded on some legal authorities and they've also received endorsement by the Superior Court of Judicature, including the Supreme Court of Ghana. We we'll first turn our attention to the Black's Law Dictionary by Brian Gaynor. This is what is defined as adverse possession. Black's Law Dictionary. Adverse possession defined. The enjoyment of real property with a claim of right when that enjoyment is opposed to another person's claim and is continuous, exclusive, hostile, open, and notorious. You didn't notice what the Black's Law Dictionary defines as adverse possession. When a, a, one person, let's say Mr. A, has got a piece of realty or real property. Real property means that he may have a house or a building uh, or a land, a piece of land. Then Mr. B is in possession of this property that belongs to Mr. A. The definition of adverse possession is that if the possession that B is holding over that property of A is continuous, it's exclusive, it is hostile, we say that B is an adverse possession. Hope, you hope, hope it's clear. You understand that. It is continuous. It is hostile. It is exclusive. What that means is that the way B is using that particular property, the way B is behaving or exercising his rights, of, or his rights over that property of A, it is as if it belongs to he himself, B. Okay? It is exclusive. It is hostile. 
it threatens the very interest of A. And it is continuous. The person is in that kind of possession for a very lengthy period of time. We are saying that if such a possession is continuous and exclusive in that format or in that manner, it constitutes an adverse possession. Hope you understand that. All right. Let's also look at the short dictionary, the shortest dictionary, the deluxe edition, what it also adds onto adverse possession. The shorter Oxford dictionary, the deluxe edition, says on adverse possession, the occupation of land to which another person has title with the intention of possessing it as his own. You noticed what the shortest Oxford Dictionary also adds, which is also concurrent with what we found in the Black's Law Dictionary, that if another person is in possession of another's property, so like the same thing, Mr. A is here, Mr. B is there. Mr. B is in possession of Mr. A's property, and the way B is dealing with A's property, it is as if it belongs to him, B. But in actual fact, it doesn't. If he does that, we are saying that B is in adverse possession of A's property. Hope that is clear. So what would that mean? Let's say, for example, A has a piece of land, okay? Or in the example, uh, the earlier scenario that we gave. So he bought a piece of land. He's got documents on it. Probably he's even had a lease prepared by whatever traditional area or chief or regent or whoever is there. So he has some kind of leasehold interest or some kind of documentation on it. So the land belongs to him. Then for some reason, maybe in a surgeon he traveled or for some other reason, that cannot possibly be explained. You have B going to occupy that particular property. So like we said, he went there, he was farming, and he began constructing and doing things on the property. And the manner in which he's exercising right over the property it is as if he's the owner. You understand that? When you have such kind of possession, we say that it is adverse possession. It is adverse possession. He is acting as if he's the owner. So, for example, B takes steps and begins to sublet some of the property to other people. Maybe it's a bare land and he goes and someone wants to sell some wache or some, some joint. Then he puts the person on the, on, on the land, takes some money from him. Some mechanics or what they call fitter, those fitters, those fitting mechanics. Maybe they want some space to maybe um, set up a workshop. He just grants a portion of them, a portion of the, of the land to them as workshop. Then he's taking tariffs from them, okay? Or that maybe uh, the, the local assembly comes and they are trying to exact tools from the people, the users of the land, and he's the first person who goes in there with his name to try and pay. You see, acts like that suggest that he's exerting ownership on that particular land, even though it doesn't belong to him. The law is that if that person is in such kind of possession, that is hostile, that is continuous, that is exclusive, even to the true owner, this person is said to be in adverse possession. That is what we mean. So tying that with what Justice Kulendi said in the Binga uh, uh, Dubate case, if you have such kind of long possession that arises out of adverse possession, then it could, in the long run, constitutes a proper title. Hope that is clear. We'll come to that shortly. Now, to add the icing on the cake on this matter, her ladyship, Justice Sophia Adinira, in one of the most powerful judgments that she ever wrote, in Ajete versus Imaboy, this is what the learned justice said in respect to adverse possession. By Justice Adinira, adverse possession must be open, visible, and unchallenged, so that it gives notice to the legal or paper owner that someone was asserting adverse claim to his. So you saw in Ajay versus Maboy, the 2013 to 2014 Supreme Court of Ghana law report, it was there, her leadership statement, that when we are talking about adverse possession, we are saying that this person who is laying claim to adverse possession is in occupation of the property, he's in occupation of the land, he's in occupation of the house, in a manner that it gives notice to the paper owner, the one who actually has the paper document. This person is behaving in a way that it should give notice to him that he is asserting a claim, he is claiming a certain right, a certain power over the property that is inconsistent with the right of the true owner. If he does that, we are saying that he's in adverse possession. Guys, hope, you, hope, hope your point is clear. So now, if for example, A is the one who gives permission to B to come and stay on his land, and A has traveled, and B is on the land for, for whatever, five years, ten years. 
Question, can we say that B is in adverse possession? Can we say that? It is A who gave him permission, B, to come and reside on the land. All right, then he's doing all the things that he's doing. But A gave him the permission to do that. Can we say that B is in adverse possession? Obviously not. The reason being that whatever right that you are exercising over the property was granted you because it was A who gave you the permission. Hope you understand that. So in the Ajete AJ case, as we have said, adverse possession is hostile to that of the paper owner. And the learned justice said that. So that it gives notice to the paper owner that someone is asserting a claim that is different or adverse to his. Hope that is fine. Again, if someone is able to grant or grant his possession, said that that kind of possession is adverse to that of the paper owner for a long and continuous and a hostile manner, we are saying that adverse possession will therefore lie. And eventually, it could grant him proper title to that. So if it is a defense for an action in land, and someone takes him to court that, oh, the land belongs to me, and why are you on the land? I'm evicting you. The question is that if this person has been on the land for all that while, and he gave you notice that the way he was treating the land um, and exercising right to bear it was different from yours, and you didn't talk about it, your title will go away. All right? So he becomes, he will now own a proper title to that. Hope you are clear. All right, so that is what basically we mean by adverse possession in this regard. Now, it brings us to another second most important part is that, so for how long shall someone be in adverse possession such that he can extinguish the right of the paper owner? This is B. We understand that the land belongs to A. A is the paper owner. He is the one who has a lease. A is the one whose name is on the document. When you take the document, you see, oh, Mr. So, so and so, that is A. It belongs to him. But the person who is now sitting on the land, who is now exercising right to the land, is not A, it is B. And the way B is doing his stuff, it is as if that his, his interest is adverse to that of A. So how long would B have to be on the property such that we will now say that the land does not belong to A anymore, but it belongs to what? B. Okay, so what do we mean by that? In Ghana, our laws, that thing is prescribed by statute. In the NRCD Limitations Act, that's a statute, okay, the National Redemption Council Decree, that was in 1972, way back. We have what we call the Statute of Limitation Act. This is NRCD 54. Now, this Statute of Limitation Act gives us an idea as to the duration within which if someone should exert power or exert interest, should exert possession, that is adverse to a true owner of a property, how long will it take for him to now be recognized? as the true and sole owner of that particular property. Now, under section 10 of the NRCD 54, it gives us a clarity of what the time duration should be. Let's look at the NRCD 54, section 10, subsection 1, 2, 3, and 4. Section 10 of the Limitation Act 1972, NRCD 54, provides as follows. Subsection 1, under the heading recovery of land. A person shall not bring an action to recover a land after the expiration of 12 years from the date on which the right of action accrued to the person bringing it, or if it first accrued to a person through whom the first mentioned claims to that person. Did you notice in section 10, subsection 1, under recovery of land, what was the duration? 12 years. 12 years duration. So if someone is in adverse possession of a property, okay, there is a person who is on another person's property, his house, his land, and he continues in that adverse possession for more than 12 years, he now becomes the true owner. That is the law. So it doesn't really matter that you have a lease. If you have a lease on the document, let's say A has a lease on his land, it is true. He is the one that he, he was giving the lease to. That is fine. So he has it. His name is there, Mr. A. Now B, for some reason, comes and occupies the land that belongs to A, or the land that A has lease on. And he exerts ownership on it, probably grants some rights to people, as we've already discussed in our earlier part of this video. If that thing continues for 12 continuous years, uninterrupted, he now can lay a claim of address possession, and the title of A will be extinguished. That is, after 12 years, if we are looking for the owner of the land, we will, no, we will never say in law that the land belongs to A. The land automatically now belongs to what? B, because he has been in adverse possession. That's sub subsection 1 of section 10. 
Okay, let's look at what section, uh, subsection 2 also adds to that. The NRCD 54 continues. A right of action to recover land does not accrue unless the land is in possession of a person in whose favor the period of limitation can run. Subsection 3 adds, where a right of action to recover land has accrued and before the right of action is barred, the land ceases to be in adverse possession. The right of action does not accrue until the land is again taken into adverse possession. Clear, right? So subsection 2 and subsection 3 of section 10 of the Limitation Act is making it very, very interesting for us to understand the scope of adverse possession. Again, for emphasis, if someone wants to now lay claim or wants to claim title to a piece of land through adverse possession, that adverse possession should have been in force for 12 years. He should have been on the land for 12 continuous years, exercising possessory rights that were hostile and exclusive to that of the true paper owner. He should have done that for 12, particular, 12, 12 continuous years. So after 12 years, limitation is there. So that's what we call the statute of limitation, which means that A can never bring an action in court. He can never come to court and say that, oh, uh, B is on my land. Why? Because for 12 years, B has been exercising right over the, over the land. And you have not said anything about it. The court will not entertain such an action. And that, we are saying, that can be a ground of a defense against an action in land. Now, you also notice that in subsection 3, it mentions that if before the expiration of the limitation period, there are intervening events, that is, circumstances happen, that cause the adverse possession to cease. After that, the person, the adverse possession has to now run anew. Let me try and explain it. So, I buy a piece of land, or you buy a piece of land. Let me use you. <laughs> so, you buy a piece of land, all right? Then, you got a visa to travel outside Ghana. Maybe it's for some further studies. You did all your documentation and that stuff. You, you put some, some, some blocks or you were cultivating some stuff. You put it in care of somebody. Then maybe you left. Along the line, maybe the caretaker also died. You also didn't know. So the caretaker died and you were there. All right? So whilst you were there, information got to you that there was somebody who had entered onto the land and was doing certain other activities that were not authorized by you. What that means is that the person is now in possession, adverse to your interest. You understand that? So he's been there for first year, second year, third year. Even if he continues for 11 years, and in the 11th year, you come from abroad and come and stop him. Okay? And in the 12th year, the person, you now decide to take an action against him. The person cannot say, that, oh, it's 12 years now, so I am the correct owner or I have your title has been extinguished. Why? Because there are 12 years and it actually run. That is what the subsection 3 is trying to mean. That before the limitation period, if there are circumstances that truncates the adverse possession, I mean, if the person wants to lay claim to adverse possession again, then he needs to start counting the 12 years afresh. Hope you are fine. All right. So for practical intents and purposes, please, that doesn't mean that if you have a land, abandon it for 12 years and wait for the last minute. If you are not careful, in the current state of Ghana, I'm not sure you'll be able to come back and take it. If you've come and the person has probably developed it to a particular extent, that may be difficult for you to. But we are just trying to get a sense of it. So at this juncture, for students, you need to understand how this adverse possession will be relevant to your exams that you may take in, in, in your end of semester under land law or if you are preparing for the Ghana School of Law entrance exam. We are saying that when there is a defense to an action in land, one of the defenses is adverse possession. And if it's an exam, please look at the facts. Once you see in the facts that there is a kind of evidence or the fact is trying to give room for a long stay, all right, it is an indication that you are being directed to something connected to adverse possession. You understand that? Because by the quotation that we brought in the Binga case by Justice Kulendi, the position of the law is that the long possession can only materialize into a better title if that long possession was also equally granted or grounded with adverse possession. So if you don't claim adverse possession for long possession, you can never, regardless of the, the length of time, be, 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 be claimed to be the owner. I hope, I hope you are fine. Great. You get it. 
So this particular position that we are talking about, or the position of the law, where we are seeing that if the person has been there for 12 years, as the statute has mentioned, it will automatically cause the title of the paper owner to be extinguished. Was elucidated in one or other case by the Supreme Court, and this case was entitled Jin versus Musa Bako. Now, in that case, Justice William Atukuba had this to say, speaking for the Supreme Court. Jin versus Musa Bako. If a squatter takes possession of land, belonging to another and remains in possession for 12 years to the exclusion of the owner that represents adverse possession and accordingly at the end of the 12 years the title of the owner is extinguished straight you got that yes so just satukuba speaking for the supreme court has made it clear made it clear in that case jim versus musabako if someone is a squatter all right and he is on a piece of land for 12 continuous years that is a hostile and exclusive to that of the paper owner. After 12 years, the title of the paper owner is extinguished automatically. When we are talking about the new owner, the new owner is the squatter. All right. There are other decisions of the Supreme Court that has sought to kind of um, add a bit of clarity to what a squatter means. Because usually, the technical definition of a squatter is someone who is there on permission, more or less. So either a squatter or a licensee. But the point is simple. I think it's still there that. If the person is being a squatter and how he's living in the place, it is hostile. Okay, when we say hostile, which means he has not been given permission, he's doing things the way he wants, he's not accountable to anybody. That is what we mean by adverse possession. Okay, so if the person continues like that for 12 continuous years, after 12 years, the title of the paper owner is extinguished. The paper owner, regardless of the fact that he has a lease, cannot come back and say that, oh, I have documents, the land belongs to me. It's gone, gone forever. <laughs> hope, hope that is clear. All right, so that's the point of adverse possession. I retreat that for the students. Take note. If you have a problem for the facts of the matter, admit that someone has been on a piece of land and he's been there for a very long time. You ask yourself that. During that continuous stay, how long has he been there? Has he been there for 12 years and counting? If he has been there in 12 years and counting, then he's probably satisfying, satisfying the first requirement for adverse possession. Number two, what has been the nature of the person's stay on the property? Was it that he was granted permission to be on it? Now note, if he was granted permission to be on the property, it doesn't matter. He can be there for one million years. He can never claim adverse possession. Why? Because his right of stay there was permitted by the true owner or the proper owner. Hope you're okay. But if he was not given permission, or for whatever reason, he, was not, he does not have any legal authority, then he's been on the property exercising overt acts of control. After 12 years, he becomes the owner. All right? So when we go back to the case that we started with, the Binga Sapo Subati versus Kobo Sumpra, that was what happened. Kobo Sumpra had been on the land for 20 years plus. When the matter got to the Supreme Court, the Supreme Court reviewed the evidence that was preferred before the Court of Appeal and the, the trial court. And they saw that Kobo Sumpra had been on the land by virtue of a permission that had been granted here by one of the aunties or the great mothers of, uh, of Dubati. So she gave Kobo Sumpra permission to be there. And she died along the line. So she was there on the permission of that lady, that woman who had died. I mean, how do you therefore now claim adverse possession? Which means your state was not hostile to theirs. You recognize that they were your owners, they were your grantors or your landlords or whatever. And they, you were responsible for, to them, accountable to them. So if after a while, after 20 years, someone comes, you can't come and claim adverse possession on that. So, ladies and gents and friends, that is on the subject of defenses to action in land, adverse possession. Now, for a note of finality, get it. This is the point for practice also, is that adverse possession, the plea of limitation, cannot be raised first time on appeal. It has to be specifically pleaded. What we mean is that if the matter is going to court, these are just procedural aspects of the law. If the matter is going to court, the person needs to mention it in his pleadings at the very time that the matter went to the high court that, he was relying on the plea of adverse possession, or he was relying on the limitation pleas according to um, the Status of Limitation Act. You have to mention it the first time that the matter is going to court. You cannot come and raise it anew at the Supreme Court or at the Court of Appeal. When that happens, I mean, it will not be accepted, or it's, it's the rules of court does not allow that to be permissible, okay? So that's just is for a bit of a practice, but for us who are key on the substantive law, adverse possession is one of the defenses to an action in land. Okay, so stay tuned in our next video when we discuss defenses to action in land. Bona fide purchaser for value without notice.